Hey, what's up guys? It's Monday and it is the very beginning of block two. We're gonna get started today with some um, embryology. Not my favorite, but I'm gonna convince myself it's my favorite. And I am dressed like this in scrubs today just because I have to go to the anatomy lab to do dissection of head and neck. But before that, I do have two lectures. We have learned a lot from block one and we're gonna go into block two even stronger than ever hopefully, and we're gonna start that with a cup of coffee because that is the only way to start my day, honestly, at this point. So I just finished lecture one. We had a lecture over teratogens and its effect on development, just kind of as an intro. And I did learn there is such thing as a Sonic the Hedgehog gene, which makes a Sonic Hedgehog protein, which I thought was really cool because it's a, it's a cartoon, so. And we just kind of learned a lot of the different diseases and genes involved in these different patterns. Here's a Sonic the Hedgehog gene affecting the uh, anterior posterior pattering of your limbs. Um, it also affects different things around your neurotube, so it'll help with creation of your vertebra. I saw this on the main screen, on, on the title screen. I was like, why is there a cartoon there? And come to find out, that's the proper name of a protein. <laughs> Point to anatomy lab. Back to the same old, same old Anki, this time with a ton of new cards to start off the block. She won't let me get out of bed. Dolly. Mm. <laughs> guys so i just finished pair teaching we basically taught the head and neck region of the anterior and posterior triangles this portion of anatomy is one of the portions that i wasn't the greatest at in uh college so i had to you know buckle down and kind of learn those but not as much as i have to buckle down for development i am not really a fan of development it's a lot of moving parts and things that are quite literally moving when the embryo is developing into the fetus and a lot of things folding and flipping and it's really hard to visualize that and i've been trying to find videos online like youtube videos that kind of show animations of it i have to visualize it 3d and i and it's hard for me to visualize that 3d oh look guys i'm on my 50 day streak my 50 day mark for I guess consistency. <laughs> now I'm doing a developmental lecture over formation of the neural tube. That is this section right here. Formation of the neural tube out of all that we need to know, or not even all of it. This is just a 50 minute lecture summarized in this little blob right there. 50 minute lecture. <laughs> For dinner, we have some salmon rolls, pinwheeled with feta and spinach, um, some diet peach tea, and some tootsie rolls for dessert. Definitely not um, conventional, but really yummy. All right, so it is Wednesday today, and if you guys forgot, I have an OSCE exam today where they're gonna grade me basically on my ability to take a full history, and that's why I'm dressed in this non-virtual school outfit. Before that, I do have a few lectures uh, earlier I just had one um, over the musculoskeletal exam, uh, just testing 
multiple different joints and different types of common findings like arthritis, gout, uh, torn rotator cuffs, things like that. And now I have epidemiology lecture that's going to basically just go over the basics of epidemiology and medicine. But I do need to cook a quick breakfast because I haven't eaten today and I need some coffee. So I'm going to get that done. Um, but when it gets around lunchtime, then I'm going to start preparing for the OSCE, remove my notes one more time, and then go right into it. guys it's about 12 43 and i just finished doing a chunk of anki cards i think i did about 230 something and i have about 200 left and all the 200 left are new cards so that's going to take some time but um, i had to take a break and come look over my notes real fast for my oski test that i'm about to have in about an hour so this is where i'm going to be doing the test in this area and i'm just basically working on right so this is a practice history i took yesterday um, with my friend Brooke, um, we <laughs> basically practiced. It's really messy. Uh, this is not what I turn in, but the only thing you really can use during the OSCE or the exam is a blank piece of paper when you start. And so um, I kind of practiced writing out the template because you get three minutes to write out the history format that you want to ask. Here's the results of me quickly writing down the format, and then this is the result of the whole interview. This is the paper I'm going to be starting with. And this is probably how it's going to end. Um, but this is just the practice paper. So the history needs to get done. After that, we are going to do some more Anki, work on the clinical correlates peer teaching that I have to teach tomorrow. Hopefully that doesn't take too long because I did want to kind of get ahead because I feel like since block two started Monday, I've been behind. So I want to at least maybe uh, look at tomorrow's lectures for a little bit, just skim over them. Um, because embryology has been really tough and I don't know if I can afford to just be caught up at this point because it's really tough for me. So I think I might need a preview on um, the lectures for tomorrow. So today's been a light day, a very light day. It was only doctoring lectures today. Um, so that's why I was able to get 200 something Aki cards done before it was two o'clock. Um, but hopefully I can utilize that time I've been given and run with it and try to get to a very comfortable point because right now I'm extremely uncomfortable, especially with embryology. All right, so the patient interaction is done. Um, I think it went fairly well. I got some good comments. Most of all, I did not say um too much. So I think it went fairly well. I try to do my best to put myself in a situation where it could be a real life scenario because that's what we're supposed to be emulating. But now that it's over, all the nerves, all the shakiness, it's gone, it's off. I still have lots to do today. I still have to do Anki and I still got to look at tomorrow's material and I'm pretty sure I have something else to do I'm forgetting about. Oh, peer review for anatomy. Have to look at that too. But the good thing is, even though it feels like 6 p.m., it's only 3 p.m., so I do have good hours there to get some work in. Um, an NGO cell? I don't know if that's how you say it. The most inferior of the three primary vesicles. Um, rhombocephalon or hindbrain, yeah. As you guys can see, I can't pronounce anything to save my life. Working on some more anatomy of the head and neck. It took me longer than normal today, um, but I am done. For dinner today, I'm having some buffalo ranch pasta. It's basically just pasta tossed in buffalo ranch. <laughs> All right, it's 7:25, and I actually don't have a class of nine, so I'm probably gonna do some Anki. I have a reading I have to do tomorrow for TBL, and I'm not sure how long it is, probably because I've been procrastinating seeing how long it is, um, but it's probably long, and I probably need to get started. Here's a reading assignment. We'll see how long it is. <laughs> 63 pages of all this small text. Come on. For this lecture, we're going over some of my differentiation. 
with kind of a focus on its contribution to the axial skeleton. Now I have a lecture on how teratogens affect development, such as this one drug that was prescribed heavily in Germany and caused many kids to um, have short limb development, very short, um, where they just have kind of um, thin-like projections from their trunks. Other things that could affect pregnancy like alcohol, uh, just a bunch of different teratogen. All right guys, it is around 3 o'clock and I finished my peer teaching um, Before that we had that teratogen lecture that I talked about with you guys and we learned about how many different things like Zika virus Medication for epilepsy even diabetes can act as teratogen So that was pretty cool to learn about all those things and I'm gonna do the Anki cards for those lectures today I'm actually gonna probably go to a coffee shop with a friend and touch up on some embryology. Hey guys, I'm back from the coffee shop and it was actually a pretty productive time until one of my friends told me they released the test grades. And I really thought someone told me that they were gonna come out next week. I think it was the course rep and they dropped them like right then and there in the coffee shop. And I'm actually not the type of person to be able to wait to look at grades. I know some people are able to wait and it's actually better for them to wait to kind of help with anxiety or help with having a better weekend, but I can't or I will have a worse weekend. It doesn't matter what I made on the exam. I have to know what I made right then and there because I am that type of person. And I checked and I did um, well on both. So just happy that I at least have some, I guess, reference for where I'm going and what I need to do to keep getting better. But I am glad the first exams of med school went well. That's not to say it won't go downhill in the future. Let's hope it doesn't, but I'll be learning new ways to learn, study, and be efficient to fight going downhill. So super excited. My heart's just beating because I just found out recently and I rushed home because I was like, I'm done studying. I'm done. I I can't focus anymore. So I'm going to take the rest of the afternoon off. It's Friday, so I'm okay with that. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining me on this week's Week in the Life of a Medical Student. I'm so glad to be able to experience this with you guys. And I will see all of you on the very next MedHead. Peace out.